everyone. My name is Laura. Thank you so much for the interruption, Annie. I am, this is my cookbook. We're not actually cooking from my cookbook today, though. We're going to be cooking a recipe from my blog. I think Annie sent out the link for it if anyone wants to look at it later, or perhaps you're maybe also cooking along. I'm going to be making a ginger sweet potato coconut milk stew. It's got lentils, it's got kale, it's got ginger, garlic, lots of spices, just lots of really good flavor. And it's pretty easy to make too. So I'm going to start making it here. And if while we're cooking, if anyone thinks of any questions or anything at all, just let me know and I'll answer. We can talk while I'm cooking it. There's no rules at all. I'm not going to be bossy about that. So I'm just going to start heating my little element here. You might hear a little fan from my little heating element, but I'll just talk really loud over it so it doesn't interfere. This I think we can hear you. You can hear me? Okay, good. Yeah, okay. I think we're good. Okay, great. So this recipe has um, coconut milk as part of our liquid. So I use coconut oil as our fat to get the aromatics and everything sauteing just so that we get more good coconut kind of flavor. You know, it's not for everyone, but in this stew, it just really works. So I'm just going to melt it. Okay. And then the first thing we put in, so many stews start this way, is one medium onion that I've diced ahead of time. I've prepped all my ingredients ahead of time, so this might go a little bit quicker than we intended, but that's okay. Okay, so maybe you can hear the sizzle. I'm gonna cook these, I like to cook when I'm using onions in a stew, I really like to cook them out for usually about five to seven minutes, quite a bit, just to really get all the moisture out of them and develop the sweet flavor. It's kind of a naturally sweet flavor. So I'm just gonna get them going, get our heat set to about medium. Just periodically, I'll pick up the computer and just show you what's going on there. Nothing too exciting, it's just onions in a pot. Does it smell good? It smells really good, yeah. <laughs> I love that smell. I do really love it. I think I need a glass of wine. <laughs> I agree. Oh, <laughs> Nothing like nice aromic onions. That's so nice. I'm just drinking water, but now I wish I had wine. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going. The next thing I have up on this is I have some spices here. I'll kind of show them if I can to the camera without spilling them. So I have turmeric, some ground chilies. Um, and you can, I say half a teaspoon in the recipe, but you can just do it to taste. Like I tend to like things a little spicier, so I'll do about a full teaspoon, but again, personal taste. Um, ground cumin and ground coriander. And that's gonna like, that is gonna form a lot of our flavor. It's kind of surprising, but like just that little bit really like gets through all the sweet potatoes. You kind of have like that spiciness, that sweetness, it's so good. Spices are kind of a thing when I add them to a pot, when they're part of the aromatic flavor base of a stew. I really like to cook them out in the coconut oil with the onions, just to get any kind of raw flavor out. I find spices really wake up as soon as you give them that direct contact with heat and the fat. It makes such a difference. I've seen sometimes people will just add it to like a stew and all the liquid is in there but you really want it to mix with the fat to get it to bloom. I think the term is bloom that they use, but it makes such a difference. 
especially in something like this too. Okay. I think my onions look, they look good at this point. So I'm going to bring the computer over while we add these. Put them in. I really hope I don't drop my computer into this pot. We'll see. <laughs> So yeah, we're just getting going. And I kind of like to let this cook, I don't know, at least a minute just to really get it going there. And like, you might see a bit of browning on the bit of bottom of the pot, but when we add our vegetable stock, we'll do kind of some scraping and that's flavor. That's always like a good opportunity for flavor. Right. And then the next thing I'm adding, this is a lot of ginger and garlic. It's three cloves of garlic and about a couple inches of ginger. May have overdone it on the ginger, but I do really like it. I like the spice. So that's all going to go in. I find with garlic, you have to be careful to make sure that it doesn't burn. Like I really, I will just kind of keep this stirring for about a minute before I add something else. Because once you burn the garlic, it will taste really bitter. So I'm gonna put the computer back. Go. So we're getting that going. Great, okay, so the next thing I'm adding, I have chopped sweet potatoes. This is about two smaller sweet potatoes, I would say. So they'll go in. And I like to really stir them up get them coated in that spice and the onions and everything. And then the other kind of backbone of this stew is lentils. I called for brown lentils in the recipe. I think these are green. They all look like greenish brown to me, so it doesn't really matter. They're all really great. So we'll put them in. So those, those are uncooked, right? They're uncooked, yeah. But you could also use, if you have cooked ones, like a can of lentils around, you could just drain them and add them at the end. And then actually that would cut down on the cooking time of this stew by about 15 minutes, which is great. Okay. So at this point, before I add any liquid, I do like to season what I have with some pepper. And that's always to taste. I know some people, you know, try to reduce their salt intake or, you know, whatever they like to use, whatever amount. So we'll go in with that. Great. And again, I'm just going to stir to get it all coated. And I'm going to add my vegetable stock. I'm going to have to scrape the pot. So, my so I'm going to get my partner to hold this for me so I can do both at the same time. So I have four cups of vegetable stock here. I'm going to add a bit. You can really hear it sizzling. And any brown bits from the onions and spices, I'm just going to scrape up with my wooden spoon here. I think that's good. I'm going to add the rest. And then at this point, it is honestly kind of just a waiting game. I'm going to put a lid on and bring it up to a boil. And then once it's boiling, I'm gonna take the lid off and just let it simmer until those sweet potato bits are nice and tender when I stab them with a knife and the lentils are totally cooked as well. Do not want to bite into a raw lentil. It's not, it's not pleasant. So this is really kind of just the waiting game now. So that usually takes about 25 minutes. Um, and then once that part's done, we add our coconut milk, which is the best part, and lots of chopped kale. And the kale could be replaced with spinach. It could be um, even Swiss chard I've done before. I grow that in the summer and I always end up with tons of it. I don't know what to do with it. So I use that instead. And we'll just wait until that wilts and then we season it maybe one more time, garnish it up and it's pretty much done at that point. 
So while I'm waiting for this, if anybody wants to like ask any questions about like, and it could be about this, it could be about the book, it could be about cooking in general. If you have any questions at all, just throw them out there. Let me know. Now it seems like cilantro would be something tasty on that. So I have my cilantro here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to finish this soup yeah. with a um, nice squeeze of lime juice usually. The lime juice is really nice with the fatty coconut milk. It just cuts right through. Yeah. It's so good. I'll do that. I'll do the chopped cilantro. A few extra little chili flakes for me because I do really like the spice. And I actually have this really good... This is like a chili infused oil that we get from a restaurant in St. Catharines called Chengdu Noodles. It's like a yeah. toasted shallots and chilies in it. It's so flavorful. It's so toasted. I always garnish my stew with a bit of that. It's quite good. But yeah, it's kind of, um, it's a very flexible recipe. It's like choose your own adventure, whatever you like, like you have your flavor base and then the little like spices or the little like garnish accents, it's up to you. It's really hard to mess it up. Like it really is. I shouldn't say that because it is like my recipe, but it's very hard to mess it up. So what is your background, Laura? I, um, my parents owned a local grocery like produce store called Wright Brothers in St. Catharines. So I grew up with that. And then I went to university and eventually I wound up in a culinary nutrition program at George Brown. So we did that. And like the focus was kind of on nutrition with that. We learned about like um, nutrition for different stages of life and things like that. But we also learned traditional like French cooking techniques and all of that as well. And then I finished that program and then I just kind of worked in restaurants a lot tried to, like, I did some volunteering with a food bank. I just kind of tried to figure out where in food my best fit would be. Um, and then eventually I started my cooking, my recipe website, and that just became something that caught on with people and that just turned out to be the thing that I would do, I guess. So yeah, that's like my background was kind of ongoing with my parents and their business. Mm -hmm. And I really did not think I would wind up in food, but it just kind of caught up with me like that, I guess. I don't know. Are you a meat eater? No, I'm not. No. Totally plant-based. My partner is an omnivore. Like, he'll eat whatever, but he's also, like, he'll eat anything. Like, he's super open-minded. He loves everything I cook, or at least he says he does. <laughs> but... He's very, like, he's not fussy. He loves all the vegan food. He'll eat anything. I'm really lucky that way. I know some people are saddled with really picky eaters, and it's tough. It's tough. So are you in St. Catharines now? I live in Welland. Oh. Yeah, I just actually, okay, so I moved to Welland three weeks ago. And, like, we were setting up this event when we were in the process of buying our house in Welland. So it was kind of funny. It's like, I've only been here a few weeks and I'm just doing this event with the Welland Library. It feels really nice. I'm like, can you cook for us? Yeah, <laughs> I can. Should I bring the wine? Yeah, we'll do a food delivery or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like it though. We love Welland. My partner is from Welland originally. So he's really happy to be in his hometown, and I like it. I like it so much so far. Well, did you see that McLean's Magazine named us the 15th best place in Canada to live? I did yeah, not. Was just, Is that recent? It just yesterday or this morning it came out. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. One of the best communities to live in. That's great. You do feel a sense of community here. Like, I... We live by the old canal pathway to like go for a walk. So we'll go down there and everyone is so friendly. Like it's yeah. just, and yeah. like you know, the neighborhood around us, there's a really nice like community feeling like, and I mean, where we lived before it was like that too. It was just like a instant warmth. Like people will just stop, we'll be sitting on our porch and people will stop and say, are you the new owners? And they're just so <laughs> lovely. We've been enjoying it a lot so far. I'm 
I'm just gonna check the stew. Okay, so it is boiling. Give it a stir. Making me hungry. <laughs> I usually eat at like five o'clock. I know that's really, I usually eat at five and I, was, I said to my partner, I was like, we're not gonna eat until about seven. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. <laughs> okay, great, so it's doing good. Annie, I have a question for you. Do you do cooking events through the library a lot? Um, so I've only been doing this job since last August, so um, not really, but um, it's something we could explore. Um, yeah, like I guess just right now everything's from home, right? So it's a little bit harder, but um, yeah, throw something out there. And <laughs> <laughs> I happily would. This is nice. Cooking so, class or something where people could come in and do hands-on or something would be great. I would think something like that would be really, be really nice. nice with something like uh, like bread or something. I know like that's something people are always asking me about. Like they just like it, people love that tactile experience, right? So are you, what are you doing right now? Are you doing cooking like somewhere? I know you're doing your blog. I just do my website right now. Okay. Uh, that, that is all I work on and I, that has kind of been enough for me for a bit. Up until my book came out in 2017 and I like, while I was making the book, I was still working at a restaurant part time and I did not stop working at the restaurant really until the book actually came out, which was, I don't know, it was not, it was a little busy. I think I was just kind of, I was too scared to like leave the employment for fear that it wouldn't work out. Right. But luckily it, it worked out, so. <laughs> okay, I'll show a little update on the stew. Nothing much is really happening, but <laughs> it's just bubbling away there, steaming away. It smells really good, but that's not it. So I think on our website, the I attached the recipe for anybody that wanted to cook along with you. So everybody that comes, um, I can send you the recipe. I think it's on Laura's website as well. Um, so you can click on and get that from her website. Anybody have questions while our stew's boiling? The quiet crowd. That's okay. <laughs> That's totally fine. Am, I the, only, am I the only one that was brave enough to put my video on there besides you, Annie? <laughs> you are. <laughs> you are. Well, Elaine, I would, I would put my video on, Elaine. Except yes, I've been home. I know I've been home for two weeks in isolation, and it's not pretty. <laughs> uh oh, I'm out of here over a year. It's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Still no excuse, Marla. I'm sitting here in my pajamas. You don't even know that. No, you oh still God. look beautiful as always. Oh yeah, look at you. I'll <laughs> pay you later. Yes, <laughs> please. Do you have COVID then? No, I, my son had it. I did not. I see. I tested negative, but I have to be retested at the end of this week before I can leave isolation. Oh, you must be going crazy. Oh, it's, it's, it's uh, brutal. It's really, I haven't been in a store. I haven't been anywhere. <laughs> it's nuts. Groceries delivered. But yeah, I did grocery pickup and popped my trunk and drove away. That's it. So, Laura, there's one question that says, where do you like to shop locally for hard-to-find ingredients? A lot of my hard-to-find ingredients, like, I, this sounds like such a cop out, I do order them online. Like, sometimes when I have a really hard time finding something, like a certain spice, I will order it online from someplace like, um, there's the Spice Trader in Toronto, and I'll have that mailed to me. Um, in terms of just like locally shopping in general, I shop around, like I don't stick to one place. Like we're in Wellin now, so we love Pupo, so we go there quite a bit. Their vegetables are always really nice. Um, when the farmer's market is going again, I really, the Fine Hill farmer's market is lovely, love that. Um, 
I, one thing in Welland, is there like a nice like health food store in Welland? Yeah, health food store? Yeah. That sells, that sells like vegetables and stuff? Just in general, like doesn't, they don't have to sell produce. It's just like, I went to the peanut mill in St. Catharines the other day because I needed a few things. I was just wondering, I was like, I wonder if we have something like that in Welland or just, I haven't looked yet. Health yeah. wise at the mall is yes. really good. Yes. They That's have my a little one. grocery section and um, yeah, yeah. they do have some fresh produce, but I mean, you're better off at Pupo's for fresh produce for sure, or the market, but the Welland market, if you haven't experienced it yet, is fantastic. I have I mean, you're in an all year market or is it just in the spring? No, it's all, all year. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's and cool. it's, it's not outdoor. Yes, it's both. So there's two buildings and uh, an outdoor center. Okay, that's great. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> and it's still operating right now, I believe, during the stay-at-home order. Oh, okay, great. I yeah. will check it out as soon as yeah. I possibly can. I love it. Now, now, what about things like, like, you know, we're from London, so we're here in Welland too now, but like I used to get a lot of my ingredients for Thai dishes and stuff from a Chinese um, little groceria. Okay. And so when I'm looking for something like lemongrass, fresh lemongrass, wow. I can never find it anywhere. Like Zares will sell it, but it's like five months old yeah. and it's dried out wood. Yeah. Right. And so I go, I can't, like, I can't use this. This is it's terrible. Not the same. There's a definitely yeah. good, there's um, a Vietnamese grocery store and restaurant combination on, is it Geneva Street, Mark? On Geneva Street in St. Catharines. And they will have, like, they will sell the Thai basil, they will sell the lemongrass, oh. they'll sell nak chum, like, they have all kinds of the specialties. They have a pet bird in there that flies around. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not intimidated, at least I think they still do. Uh, as long as you're not like you don't have a fear of birds or something like that, they have everything. Like they're really good. Well, I'll wear a hat if I go in there, but um, what's it called? <laughs> what's it called? What's the restaurant called, Mark? I can't remember. Look it up. Okay, my partner's going to look it up and then I'll let oh, you know. Oh, thank you, like, partner. I know it as the Vietnamese grocery store on Geneva Street. It's like it's by the peanut mill, that place I mentioned earlier. But they have some of the harder to find stuff for sure. Okay, I have to. I, mean, I I I used to be able to pick up fresh lemongrass like six stalks for a dollar. Oh yeah. I'm not kidding. And all all the spices that come from that groceria, like they were inexpensive, like a dollar a bottle, or it, it was know. it was just crazy. It's the just place crazy. just looked it up. It's called Din Din Fine Asian Din Foods. Din Din. Din Din. And it's D I N H. Okay. I will look for it. Marla, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't cut me off. You're good. You're good. Um, I had a comment first for one of the participants, Jaden. You're killing me with that dog. <laughs> And Laura, I'm just wondering if you um, are working on another book. I don't know if you said that at the beginning. I was late. I was having dinner. <laughs> I did not know. Um, I, okay, I had an idea for a book. I had an idea for another one. And the editor that I worked with and that I am working with, um, she wanted me to work on another book. I had an idea for one that I thought was like brilliant. It was just like an all vegan dinner recipes kind of book. Like not none of these like snacks or breakfast or things like that, just dinner stuff. Because I find with my readers, that's all they care about. They just want to know what to actually serve people for dinner when they're eating vegan plant-based food. Um, but my editor did not, she was not as excited about the idea. So I kind of, I was like, okay, I'll go back to the drawing board. I'll think of something else. And I just haven't really, I haven't hit on an idea that has excited me. If I do, I am definitely inclined to pursue another one. I enjoyed the process of making the book and sharing it with people. Like I'm open to doing it again. I just need to settle on the right concept and idea to do it so, again. So she was opposed to it being just dinners? 
Yes, because she was publishing another author that was doing kind of a similar thing. Oh, okay. So it was kind of like the timing on my part was bad. I shouldn't have waited as long to even approach her about it. But yeah, so you know, I think I might like try and like nudge her again and be like, what do you think? Maybe we'll do that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or you could always shop it elsewhere <laughs> That's an option too, yeah. but I would love to do it again I really enjoyed the process of doing it and I feel like I just I know so much more from doing it the first time that I know it would be yeah for this time Annie is this book available at the Welland Public Library I oh good I have one our one copy I will return it tomorrow okay <laughs> Yeah, it's really good. I flipped through it, and uh, yes, I will return it so other people can. Well, you should make something in it before you return it, and then bring it to me. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever made anything plant-based before, so um, yes. I'll try. You sure have. You've made salads. Well, yeah, and... <laughs> like exotic or, you know. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's good. I'm just adding a bit of water to my stew because it's... um. It's just evaporating a bit and you want to keep the little chunks of sweet potato kind of covered so that they get nice and tender. That's all I was adding there. Nothing special, just water. How's it looking? It's looking good. It's actually looking kind of brown. <laughs> it's very I'll show it to you. Before you add the coconut milk, it's not, and the kale, it's not like the most attractive dish. But once you add the coconut milk and it creams it up and then you have the yes. mix of bright green and the spices and everything is beautiful. You just how, how strong is the coconut flavor in this stew after? Because I don't love coconut and I know I do like um, Thai food. Like I'm okay with like a curry which made with coconut milk or a, a soup made with coconut milk as long as the coconut flavor is not super overpowering. I think if you love Thai curries, yeah. it would be fine with the level of coconut in this. The only thing I would recommend, like since we are using the coconut milk, right. I use the coconut oil as well. Maybe for you, if you're kind of like, ooh, yeah. maybe use like an olive oil or something. Just okay. to like kind of tamp it down because like the coconut oil flavor is so, it's such a fragrant coconut kind of mm -hmm. vibe. Whereas the milk is like, kind of sweet it's creamy it's not as like in your face coconut flavor i find but once you mix it with like the acid of the lime which we'll put on at the end nice the spice it kind of the balance that's the beautiful thing about thai food it's like the balance of like the hot sour salty sweet that mm -hmm. kind of like there's no one dominant flavor and i find that with this stew too like once you get the acidity in there and there's the heat you're kind of tasting a lot of things, not just coconut. So I don't know. To answer your question, I would say it's not too coconutty. I think And leave the oil out. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> like Sounds good. Oil or something plain instead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So do you create all these your like recipes just kind of come to you? <laughs> And are you, uh, are you a measure? Like, do you measure everything? I do. Because do? I know lots of cooks that don't. They just do it, like, by taste. Oh. Well, if I'm just cooking for my partner and I, it's like a, you know, a regular, like, Thursday night, and we're eating whatever, I will not follow a recipe for anything. Like, it will just be, what do we have in the fridge? I'll just make something with that. Even if I'm recreating like a recipe that I know is on my site, like I will just, I'll just do some version of that. Like I'm not going to follow it. But when I'm developing a recipe for my site where I know other people will make it, I will test it a bunch of times. We will measure, I will weigh the ingredients as well, just to have like total accuracy. Um, Cause I don't, I don't want someone to screw it up. Like I want someone to have the same experience I had with the dish, right? Um, but I do just come up with the recipes. Sometimes I'm really inspired by something I see in a magazine or something I've ate at a restaurant when I could go to a restaurant. I'll be inspired by a flavor combination there. And then I'll just apply it to some technique that I know is 
um, accessible to a lot of the people that read my website, that kind of thing. It's a lot of like, I spend a lot of time reading other people's cookbooks. Like my collection is pretty vast and I read a lot of food magazines. I subscribe to all of them. I subscribe to a lot of like cooking email newsletters too. Like I just really immerse myself in that world and learn as much as I can all the time. And that really informs the recipes I put on my site. We're so getting- they're not, they're not necessarily vegan cookbooks or websites or whatever that you're following? Not, uh, no, actually some of my favorite cookbooks are def like have meat in them. Like I just get inspired by, you know, how they cook a certain thing or what spices they're going to use and how they're going to achieve like that certain flavor. Like I like vegan cookbooks. I have quite a few of them and I love them, but all of my favorite most used ones have meat and dairy in them, which like the vegans in my life, the vegans who follow me, it's just like, they can't fathom it. It's just like, that's outrageous. But I think that is where, especially when we're talking about like cultural cookbooks, like I have a lot of really great Middle Eastern cuisine cookbooks, a lot of great Indian cuisine cookbooks. That is like, that's where I learn the most. Like that's just, that's such valuable knowledge that's been handed down through generations. It's a whole cooking heritage. That's my favorite stuff. I was just going to say we're kind of... So what is your... What's that? What, what is your favorite cookbook? I, I can grab a couple and show them to you, actually. Okay, well, in library, you better have them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, I have a very similar light in my stairwell. Do you? Yes, I do. Yeah, I, I love that light. <laughs> yeah, I have one very similar. It's got a dimmer on it. It's just I'm getting sun from here right now, so I haven't put it on yet. See, these are some of my favorites right now. This one is called... There's Marla. <laughs> Hi, Marla. <laughs> to Asia with Love. This one's called To Asia with Love by Hetty McKinnon. Hetty is actually okay. a of mine. She was born and raised in Australia. Her parents are from, I think, I think they're both Cantonese. So, and now she lives in the U.S. So she has kind of this like third culture thing going on, but it's kind of her cooking background mixed with the very like, Cantonese recipes she grew up with and some of them are more like modern cooking techniques too really she photographs all the photos with a film camera it's not digital so they have that like really warm feel this is a vegetarian cookbook it has some eggs and dairy in it um, but it's outstanding it just came out it's really wonderful okay and then this one is called fresh india it's by mira soda this is, again, this is actually a vegetarian cookbook, but it does have some dairy. Um, she is a columnist for The Guardian in the UK, and her cuisine is just outstanding. Like, it's just, the photos are so beautiful. Lots of, like, kind of traditional Indian recipes, but they're also, there's some, like, modernizing to make them a bit quicker, too. I really like this book. There's a lot of, like, really great vegetable dishes in here. And then this one is called Palestine. It's by Sammy Oh Tini, yeah. And the co-author yeah. is Tara Wigley. So this is a Palestinian cookbook. This one has quite a bit of meat in it, but it's also vegetable rich too. This one is just so gorgeous. It's just like, this is one of my favorite styles of cuisine is just Middle Eastern food in general. It's very like heavy on kind of chickpeas, there's lentils. But like I said, there is a bit of meat, but they really are not shy. Things like herbs and like, I don't know, they use a lot of um, like pine nuts and a little bit of chili. And it's just, this is a wonderful book. And there's a lot of storytelling in it too. Like I just, it's such a, I don't know, it's very like a rich kind of book. Like there's just so much to absorb with it. I really love it. And I've cooked, I don't know, probably a bunch of recipes from this book. Out of all of them, I've cooked the most out of this one, and everything is outstanding. It's quite, quite good. Some of them are a little bit 
more lengthy in process. That is one thing for sure. But those are three that I just, I turn to all the time right now. Okay, well, I guess I will, um, I see Anna Murtaugh is on this. I'll have to be doing some uh, interlibrary loans. <laughs> Just to let you know, if you don't have them, I'll be ordering these through self interlibrary loan, Anna. No problem, Elaine, anytime. <laughs> Say we don't have any of those ones. <laughs> we'll get them from somewhere. <laughs> okay, the sweet potatoes are tender, so I'm going to add um, the coconut milk and the kale. So. I'll show you. We'll just get this held in place here. So good. So I just usually, I'll just like prick one of them and it's pretty tender. It just comes right off. So that's good. So I have my coconut milk here. I'm just going to give it a little stir before it goes in. This is full fat coconut milk, but you could definitely use light. That's actually another, if you're kind of hesitant about the flavor of coconut milk, you could use light coconut milk. It won't be as rich, but the coconut flavor is not as pronounced with that one. So we have that. And then this is about four cups of chopped kale. So we'll put that in. It's gonna wilt down quite a bit. This looks like a lot at first. Like it looks like too much kale. And then it just goes right down. Once the kale has actually wilted, that's when I'm going to season with salt and pepper because right now if I season this with salt I'll probably go too heavy-handed because the kale just looks like there's so much of it. So we'll let that go. Okay I'm gonna put this back. Great. So I'll only take like a couple minutes or so. I'm excited to eat this for dinner. I haven't had this recipe in a while. <laughs> <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. We, containers we, outside. Cooking. There's <laughs> cooking in my kitchen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she lives right by me. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm, yeah, probably. I think so. Just based on what you said before, I'm kind of in that area. Oh, okay. It's a nice yeah. neighborhood. It's so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll are, be I'll you, be over soon. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Are, you, are you both? Are are you neighbors of Anna Olson? I think I live on the same street as her. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we know where you live. That makes sense. <laughs> we used to work for Anna back when they had their spot at um, Ravine in Queenston. I worked there for a bit. She's so lovely. Well, that's good. Do you Ooh. make? Um, do you ever make tabbouleh? Yes. Okay, because I tried to make it for the first time two nights ago, okay. and it, it I, I did something. I, something wasn't right. I just looked up a bunch of recipes and kind of winged it. I don't know. What's did the secret? You, what was wrong with it? Did you find it bland? Or I'm just yeah, I found like the parsley. The I like the parsley flavor to be stronger, and I found the parsley was a little like I don't know. It was like it wasn't. Maybe I didn't put enough oil. Like I was trying to be. Okay. Conservative with that, but it was, I don't know. It was, it wasn't as good as, uh, I used to love the tubule from Villa Medina at the Penn okay. Center. Okay. So one thing to know about, okay. One thing I've learned from, I've just added my salt and pepper. One thing I've learned from Middle Eastern cooks is that with tabbouleh, the way you cut the parsley makes a difference. Okay. One of my, oh my gosh. One of my old Middle Eastern cookbooks, it's like a vintage Middle Eastern cookbook, the author says in it that like her husband, okay, they were like newly married and he saw the way she was cutting the parsley for the tabbouleh and he said he was going to leave her. And she, oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, like it's not that extreme. No. <laughs> in the book, she specifies cutting it with a serrated knife. Okay. The serration like agitates the leaf and lets yeah. out more, I guess, li like um, the inner kind of liquid from the parsley yeah. to make it more peppery tasting. So there's that to consider. And then the other thing when you're making tabbouleh and you're using olive oil, I always say this, like people use the expression fat is flavor. Fat is not flavor. Fat carries the flavor over your palate. It's mm -hmm. the vehicle. 
So depending on how you season, how much like lemon or acidity you're using in your tabbouleh, the mm -hmm. olive oil washes the flavor over your palate. So I never, I know sometimes we want to like, you know, lessen the amount, but like I really, with good olive oil in a salad where there's so few ingredients because tabbouleh does not have a ton of ingredients, yeah. I will not skimp on the olive oil. Like that yeah. would be, and another thing, I have so many thoughts about this. When I'm cooking <laughs> the, um, the bulgur for tabbouleh, when you pour the boiling water over it, add a pinch of salt to that. Okay. Away, so that the tabbouleh can soak in that bit of salt. So it's just seasoned right from the start. Like you're starting with a base that has flavor. It's nutty. It's beautiful. Um, and yeah, just don't skimp on the olive oil. Yeah. And like maybe kind of bruise up the parsley as you're cutting it. I feel like that's the thing. The parsley was not like, so ha wasn't broken down enough. It wasn't, so it's not soft enough. It's like, Okay. It it just didn't wilt enough or whatever it is. It was just kind of like still kind of like eating a leaf. Right. You know? Yeah. So everything you're saying makes sense about the serrated knife and more liquid and more salt and whatever. Yeah. The level of your acidity too, like lemon or whatever you use. That's yeah, I use like lemon. Parsley too. Like I find for me, anytime I, sometimes when I follow a recipe for a salad, I think it's just my palate. I prefer a lot more acid. Like I yeah. love lemon and I love vinegar. Sometimes just a little bit more like brings up that freshness and wakes everything else up. Yeah, I'm going to try again. I'm not going to give up, but yeah, don't give up. I won't. I won't. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. So Thank I think you. Speaking, of olive, speaking of olive oil. Yep. What what is what is your favorite brand of all olive oil? I like, I have a hard time finding olive oil that I really like here. Um, I Me like, too. Me too. Yeah, I used to, when I could go over to the States, like when the border was open, I would buy, I would like special order olive oil to our U.S. address all the time. There was a brand called Brightland that I was really into, but you can't get it here yet. I think they are going to sell in Canada in the next year or so. Um, but one that is available here that I don't mind is, um, it's called Acropolis. And I've seen that at the peanut mill at health food stores. It's a Greek olive oil. So it's a little bit milder. It's not as peppery. Um, but I find that one has really good flavor. It's good and fresh. And like, I know, like, sometimes people debate whether like olive oil that we're buying in grocery stores is actually olive oil. Like that one is certifiably olive right. oil. It's the real deal. So I'm just chopping some cilantro to put into this right now. And do you have a little bit of nan bread there to dip into that stew? I know. I wish I had bread. I know this is my greatest failure with the Zoom. I did not. I did not prepare myself with bread. <laughs> I know. I always just need a good piece of bread with something like this. Okay. Amazing. So I'm gonna get my partner to hold this again. He's being a very good sport. <laughs> oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Yeah, so probably it does. Yeah, yeah that looks so good. Probably cooked the kale a little too much, but that's okay. So we have all this cilantro, mm -hmm. and I'll put some of it in, but I like, you know, that freshness on top. So good. And then this is that chili oil I was talking about. I'm just going to drizzle some of it in. It's like kind of a toasty flavor, and it looks really pretty on the top, too. As soon as it hits the heat, you can smell it. It's just so lovely. Great. And now I'm just going to plate out. I'll show you what it looks like in a bowl. It's super thick. Like, this is such a hearty stew. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good. Great, I'm gonna put it down here. That's great, and I have a little more cilantro. I have a lime here. And like I said earlier, I have a thing for acidity, so I put a lot of lime on it. And that's it, that's our stew, we did it.
<laughs> it looks great. Oh, it looks delicious. Yeah, it looks delicious. Tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow thing where I take a bite and I'm like, oh, so good. I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was nice cooking with you all. Does anyone have any like more questions or anything? No, it's fun. We need to do this live when we can. Yeah, I would love to do that. Oh, that would be wonderful. I would have full on cooking classes in my house once we're allowed to do that again. I wouldn't hesitate. Oh, great. Sign me up. Me too. <laughs> that would be fun. That mm -hmm. would be a lot of fun. And where did you say you got that chili oil from? Yeah. This is from a restaurant called Chengdu Noodles in St. Okay. And, um, yeah, they do really excellent takeout, like quite good, but they sell this chili oil. You can, you can order the chili oil with your takeout and you can just like, we'll order a couple jars at a time just so we have it. It's delicious. We put it on pretty much everything we cook. We just put it on. It's so addictive. It's very good. Okay. Awesome. Very good, Laura. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much, Laura. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you so much. I really appreciated seeing everyone. It was nice. And now you can go have dinner. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to eat. It's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> it's ready. <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks, Thanks so much. Okay. Everybody have a good night. Yes, you too. Uh, Bye. Bye, all my Bye. library friends. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.